and welcome back. So in this video, we're going to be looking at the structures ionic compounds make. Hopefully, by the end of this video, you should be able to recognize what is represented by an electron density map. You should be able to recognize and reproduce the structure of an ionic lattice. And you should be able to take this structure and use it to explain the properties of an ionic compound. So some of this you will have done at IGCSE. You should already know about the structure of an ionic lattice. That part of the video should just be a recap. This part, however, is probably new. Now a common question I get asked is, how do we know something so small has the structure we say it does? Now, part of that answer is through experimentation and analysis of the results of the properties or interpretation, but there are also techniques that allow you to basically see the structure of different molecules of compounds. Now there are a few techniques which use x-rays and pass them through samples of the chemical, such as ionic crystals. Now these x-rays are diffracted, and based on the pattern of the diffraction, you can produce a map which represents areas of electron density. Now this is a very simplified, idealistic electron density map of an ionic bond. Now each line represents an area of a certain electron density. They do not show shells. Don't get mixed up with your IGCSE representations of electronic configuration. Each one of these lines is like the contour lines on a map. So in a geological map, a contour line will show all of the area at a certain height. The lines here show a certain electron density. Now this simplified map here shows a pure ionic bond. You would see that each of the ions is separate from each other. There's space in the middle. When we get onto covalent bonding, you'll see a different shape displayed by an electron density map. But for now, we're just focusing on ionic bonds and ionic substances. So if you had, let's say, sodium chloride, this would be a simplified version of an electron map of sodium chloride. In this case, A represents sodium, and B represents chloride. We know this because chloride is a bigger ion than sodium. So again, there's space in between the different ions, and you can see they're in a regular pattern. So this is all part of the evidence for how we know what these structures look like. So how do we represent giant ionic lattices? we tend to put them like this. Now a lattice is a giant structure that repeats the same pattern in every direction. Ionic lattices are termed giant because they do not have a certain amount of ions. There is theoretically an infinite amount of ions you could include. If you think of sodium chloride, salt, you know you can get different sized grains of salt. But if it's pure, it will only contain the same chemical. So it's termed giant because you don't know exactly how many ions there are. If you think of the formula for sodium chloride, NaCl, there isn't just one ion of each in a piece of sodium chloride. There's millions. NaCl just represents a ratio. There is a one-to-one -one ratio between sodium and chloride ions. And you can see that here in the lattice. Every positive ion is next to a negative ion along the x, y, and z axes. You can see the opposite for the negative ions. So when you're thinking about ionic bonding and ionic structures, you shouldn't just think of two ions forming an ionic bond. Each ion will form ionic bonds all around it. So as I said, hopefully you recognize this structure from IGCSE. 
And you should also remember how to link this structure to the properties of ionic solids. So let's just recap that as well. So the three main properties you should be aware of. The first one is that ionic solids have high melting and boiling points. Now if you asked why this is the case, you need to mention that it has a giant structure with many strong ionic bonds. And you should always link questions about melting and boiling point to the amount of energy required. So because it has lots of strong ionic bonds, it takes lots of energy to break them to melt the substance. Okay, second key point. Ionic solids do not conduct electricity. Well, they do if they're in the molten form or dissolved in water. So why don't the solids conduct electricity? You need to think about the two things required for a substance to conduct electricity. They need charged particles, and those charged particles need to be able to move freely. Ionic solids have charged particles, the ions, but they are in a rigid structure. They cannot move freely, therefore you cannot get a current flowing through. When you melt them, however, you break the interactions between the ions, and therefore they are able to move. So you have charged particles that are able to move. So an ionic liquid can conduct electricity. And finally, ionic solids tend to be brittle. So this is a key term you should be aware of. Basically, they will break apart when struck. Now, why is that? So I've just drawn a rough representation of a small section of an ionic solid. You can see that in every direction, there's a positive ion next to a negative ion, forming strong ionic bonds. Now, if you strike a structure, if you try and beat it into a different shape, like you can with metals, it's going to do this. Now, before, the negative and positive ions were alternating. But if you strike it so that you shift a layer of ions along, you're going to end up with like ions next to each other. Now, we know that ions of the same charge repel each other. That's exactly what happens, causing the layers to push apart and the substance itself to break. So applying any force to an ionic substance causes it to break apart. It is a brittle substance. So hopefully, you should now be able to recognize what is shown by an electron density map. This is new, so if you don't fully understand it just yet, don't worry, we will be covering it again when we get to covalent bonding. You should have had a recap of what the structure of an ionic lattice looks like. And hopefully you should be able to link that structure to the physical properties of ionic solids. So make sure you complete your notes and I'll see you in class.